Fruit Logistica offers fresh produce brands a chance to raise their profile and promote themselves to buyers from all over the world. One such example is Clemengold, the citrus brand from South Africa, which has been making a name for itself both here in Europe and in other parts of the world like Asia. Adele Ackerman is marketing manager of Clemengold, and she's been speaking to Chris White. Uh, Adele, you were awarded the Asia Fruit Award at Asia Fruit Logistica just recently for marketing campaign of the year. It was for your efforts as a brand in, in China. Tell us, what have you been doing in, in China? Yeah, Chris, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, we have over the past five years, period of five years, carefully aligned ourselves um, and our efforts with very well positioned importers in China. Um, and right from the word go, we as a business made a strategic decision to, to do brand building in China. So that was a conscious decision. Um, we work very closely with our customers and, and we work, um, develop marketing messages, messages and campaigns that, that really resonates with the Chinese culture. Um, it was a process and a journey for the Clement Gold brand and, and it, it took some time. Um, and we developed a very good way of work with our customers. Um, we, we really develop um, marketing campaigns and messaging that that really works for the individual customers in their different channels. And and the Asia Fruit Award um, gave recognition really to a team effort. Um, and yeah, we, we feel very privileged to, to have won the award. We've managed to finish the season off um, with a very successful campaign um, for Clement Gold in China. So... Why does branding work so well in Asia? Is the market really so different to the rest of the world? Yeah, Chris, it's it's all about how Asian shoppers behave um, when making purchasing decisions um, when it comes to fresh fruit. Um, this varies from market to market. Um, and it's really all about the cultural differences and, and what, res what fruit resembles in each culture. And our brand philosophy, um, as I mentioned, is a strategic business uh, decision and, and it focuses really on markets where there are opportunities for us to do brand building and to really resonate with the end consumer. Um, we help the consumer then to become familiar um, with the product, to trust it and, and to deliberately choose our brands. Um, and therefore, our brands and marketing messages are, are really tailor-made. To speak to each culture and and we went through that that wonderful and exciting process with our chinese customers um, chinese customers to to really develop something that 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 they can relate to um i mean china in general is is still one of the world's biggest providers of of commodities and and manufacturers of mostly um, non-branded goods um, for resale by other companies so in other words i mean it's 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 volume products without personalities, but I think that that's it's kind of becoming an historic trend in China. So, so you can really say New Asia has emerged in terms of 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 branding a commodity like fresh fruit, and it is it's I think it's here, Chris, where Clement Gold really sees that opportunity. When we started with brand building in China, um, it was it was when nobody else was really doing it for out of South Africa. And it was, it, it was a hard journey for us. Um, we, we continued with our brand building exercises, even, you know, at, at a time in the Chinese market, when, when, when the prices didn't really reflect that, we could have possibly sent that, that, that fruit to other markets, but we stuck to our plans and we said, look, we're putting the product in, we're committing the value, we're putting the product in the market and we're, we're supporting it with, with a strong um, branding campaign. And we stuck to our guns. Um, and I think um, today, lo looking back, um, yeah, we, we are very privileged, very grateful of, of what we have achieved over the last couple of years. But I think China in general is such a lovely market and a unique market where, where there's really an opportunity for that type of, of brand building. Uh, why is it more difficult to get visibility for your brand on supermarket shelves in Europe? Yeah, Chris... That's the million dollar question, um, I think. But yeah, I think the short answer is 
is due to economic conditions. I think with the European price wars, um, not only amongst the discounters, but even, even amongst high-end retail, um, yeah, I think consumers um, also has the power to get products on the shelf, and 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 that behavior is 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 very much driven by the end consumer, and ultimately, um, they are the ones that that both the suppliers and the retailers has to service. So I think within that process, the pressure to 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 really put something on the shelf that that drives value. Is, is is huge um so i think uh, yeah our, our, in terms of our brand philosophy chris we've we've really tried for exactly that reason to really develop a brand that that resonates with the end consumer um yeah so so i think you know in in, in a way that the the economic pressures within in in the european retail market um to a certain extent, you know, drives the pricing down, and it, it 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 really puts the product in a position where it's where it's very much commoditized. And and do you think the approach on the part of supermarkets is is changing in Europe? Yes, Chris. I think um, yeah. As I mentioned, the, the 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 pressure to to really differentiate in terms of quality and price. I think it, it it really leaves that opportunity in in the European market for brands for strong brands with a strong brand strategy to step up. Um, retailers are are seeking in our experience. Retailers are seeking partners um, that they can work closely together with, um, servicing ultimately the needs of the end consumers, and 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 that's a collaborative approach. So it's about them and the um, suppliers really understanding the target audience, really understanding their needs, the shopping behavior, and and what are the emotional drivers? What do shoppers really want? Um, we have worked very hard in the space for for our gold brands, um, not only Clement Gold but also Lemon Gold and Noble Gold, which form part of of, of our house of brands. Um, in terms of the quality promise and the brand messaging and and the buy-in from leading global retail and import partners um, has has been integral in in, in in that success for our brands in in certain European markets so so yes um, Chris I think just in short um, everybody is under pressure to to differentiate to create a point of difference and I think there's a real opportunity for for, for, for brands to enter um, um, into that space. You're also building year-round supply uh, for your brand in places like Spain. Will that make a big change to your fortunes in future? Uh, Chris, yes, serving our customers 12 months of the year is a, is a big focus for Fruitalist. Um, not only servicing them well and offering them security of supply, um, but also creating brand equity. I think that's that's the key for building a really strong brand. I think to put marketing efforts um, into brand building activities, you know, for a seasonal product that drops off the shelf um, after four or five months um, is, is, is not ideal. Um, we as a business are, are very well positioned and aligned with like-minded suppliers globally to really put that length of season supply for our customers on the table um, when it comes to northern and southern hemisphere supply. Um, and in combination with our products supplied uh, locally in South Africa, not only our own production, um, but also uh, the number of product that we get from third-party suppliers in South Africa that forms part of the, the Fruitalist ecosystem. Um, yeah, we, we align ourselves with these like-minded individuals and growers to, to, to really supply a product that, that meets the quality standards of the brands 12 months of the year, creating um, that top-of-mind awareness and, and really building brand equity through global supply. That's all we've got time for on this episode of FruitNet's World of Fresh Ideas. Remember, you can subscribe to Fruit Logistica's YouTube channel and see all the other episodes. And if you want a daily dose of fresh produce industry news, head over to fruitnet.com and sign up for our newsletter. And we look forward to seeing you in Berlin for Fruit Logistica.